Welcome to this show where you can watch me overhaul this old Volvo Penta diesel engine. In this very first episode, I will be cleaning out the heat exchanger. In this show, I will be overhauling this old Volvo Penta TAMD 41A engine. The engine is very similar to many of the other engines Volvo produced during the late 80s and throughout the 1990s. This particular engine is mounted in my Nimbus 3003 cabin cruiser, which I bought just two years ago. They are both made in 1987, so they are nearly 30 years old. Even though the previous owner has taken good care of it, the, the age is starting to show. So that's why I decided to yank the engine out and do a thorough overhaul. But before I start, here's a little warning. I am not a professional mechanic. I know my way around a spanner and I have some experience with engines, but I have no professional training. So some of the things I do might not be the correct way of doing it. The good news is if I can do it, you can probably do it too. If you're thinking about doing this kind of project, you should always consult with an experienced mechanic or boat owner. I did so myself. In this first episode, I will be cleaning out the heat exchanger. This is a job that is considered to be a standard maintenance job and should be done every couple of seasons. First, I mark up all the pipes and hoses so that I'm sure that I can get it all back in the right place. Next, I drain out the coolant from the heat exchanger. Now I disconnect the seawater hoses. You should expect about 3 liters of water draining out when you take off the hoses. Next, I disconnect the two pipes on the expansion tank on top of the heat exchanger. Now I remove the two nuts holding the rear bracket and disconnect the oil dipstick. I can now remove the entire exchanger and drain it from any water still left inside. To dismantle the exchanger, first remove the sink. This needs to be changed every season, so I will replace it with a new one when I put it all back together again. Now unscrew the center bolt holding the lid. Gently tap the lid with a chisel to loosen it. Be very careful not to damage the lid. Now remove the lid and inspect the inside.
This heat exchanger was actually cleaned last year, but as you can see, a fair amount of gunk has already built up. However, as long as the small pipes inside are not blocked, it is fully functional. I start the cleaning by removing all the visible gunk. The three rubber ceilings should be replaced. The lid is first cleaned with an alkaline cleaning agent. Then I use a fine grained sandpaper to even out the surface. I remove the old o-ring and clean the groove thoroughly. This o-ring is replaced by a brand new one. If the small pipes inside the exchanger is blocked, or has any residue built up, it needs to be cleaned by a special cleaning agent. I used to mix one half liter bottle of 35% vinegar to 3.5 liters of hot water. I leave this mixture in the exchanger overnight. After draining the cleaning mixture, I rinsed the exchanger several times with fresh water. Then it's time to put it all back together. Start with replacing the three rubber ceilings. I lubricate the o-ring with a silicon based lubricant to ease the reassembly and make sure to line up the lid correctly before I press it on. Tighten the center bolt firmly, but do not over tighten. The exchanger is now ready to put back on the engine.
We connect all the hoses and pipes as marked in the beginning and you are now ready to start the engine. Since I'm going to do a lot more with this engine, I will not do this yet. But if this is the only project you have, you are now ready to start the engine and do a test run. Make sure to run the engine till it's good and hot and inspect the area around the exchanger for any leaks. So that's all for this time. Join me next time while I'll be looking at all the little signs of wear and tear that made me decide to do this overhaul in the first place. And we will begin to take the engine apart. Please subscribe to my channel if you want me to continue doing this show and comment below if you have any questions or feedback. I would especially like to hear from everybody who's not from Norway as I'm still unsure whether I should continue to do this in English. So long, see you later.